And uh, for our guests that are with us this evening, first of all, welcome. This is your city council meeting. Um, we have the honor and the privilege of serving the residents and, and businesses of the city of Tifton, but the community is yours. And so it's always good to see people within the room uh, as we conduct the business of the city and to get your input. Um, I will let everyone know that we do have agendas back here on the podium. If you'd like to grab one and follow along with us, you're certainly welcome to. On the back of your agenda, I'm not going to read it verbatim, but there is a decorum for council meetings. We do have a code of conduct, and we also have a civility pledge that we have adopted um, uh, about two months ago. So it's very important to us that our meetings are run professionally and courteously and respectfully. So just want to call those, uh, those items to your attention. I will also remind you that we do have uh, meetings on the first and third Monday of each month. The first Monday is our workshop during which the only thing we really generally vote on is the agenda for the evening, and that's where we discuss all the items that we'll be voting on tonight. So this meeting will run through rather quickly because we've already discussed all the items, and we may ask questions or get a little more information before we call for a vote, but all of the items that you see on your consent agenda have all been workshopped, and so we vetted them before we uh, go to vote on them. So that's uh, sometimes a little confusing for people when they, they come in and realize for the first time, it's like they didn't even talk about that, they just voted, but we already had. So the, uh, the agendas are there for you to, uh, to follow along. At this time, I'm going to call on our fire chief, Bobby Bennett, to offer our prayer, our opening prayer. We always start with that. And then I'm gonna call on council member Folk, who will ask you to rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So, Roe. Right. Oh, God, thank you. Lord, the, the blessings that we receive every day when we wake up and just know that you're our Savior, God, is just such so refreshing to us all that know you. God, I stand here tonight and ask a special prayer for the council, Lord, as they meet and, and they discuss problems and things that goes on in the city. Lord, I just ask that you give them the knowledge and the clear thinking of, of the, what we need to do and the direction we need to go. Lord, we thank you for everybody here sitting in the audience, Lord, that cares about our town, cares about our city, and, and has input, and that uh, no one will, will have ill will or, or hard feelings when tonight's over, God, but we can, we can always lean on you and know that you will always give us the right information we need to do if we look up to you and ask you earnestly to help us make it another day. Father God, thank you again for today. And thank you for the many blessings of it. In your precious name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rahe. Everyone, please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, you have the agenda before you, and uh, our city clerk, Jessica White, sends out our packet of information with our agenda and all of the documents that go along with it, as well as minutes and, uh, and other information so that we have plenty of time to review that. So you've had a chance to look over the agenda. Is there a motion to approve or to make any changes? Move to approve. All right, thank you. Is there second. a second? All right, so I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries. The next item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes, and we have three sets of minutes that we're looking at. Uh, the February 17th, 2023, the March 20th, 2023, and then the workshop minutes for April. So you've had a chance to review those. Is there a motion concerning those three sets of minutes? Motion to approve. Okay, thank you. So I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All right, so a motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? So that carries as well. All right, we have some, um, some good things we're going to do this evening. A um, couple of good things, as a matter of fact. It's always uh, nice to be able to acknowledge uh, various organizations in our community who do so much. And so tonight I'm proud to invite our head librarian and the representatives of our library to come and join me down front here. And I'm going to invite Councilman Folk because he is on that library board. So Councilman Folk, if you'll follow me. And I'm so glad that you brought your board members. It gives us an opportunity to say thank you for the work that you do. We're very, very appreciative. And, uh, and, and your work in Tonto was excellent. All right, if you will come this way. We're going to come right here and do this. Um, if you look, you see these cameras that are back here by the, uh, by the clock. All of our meetings are on YouTube. 
And so they are aired unedited, uncut, in their full presentation and full glory on YouTube within about 24 hours of the meeting. So much of our media will you know, look on the YouTube. They don't necessarily come to the meetings, although we do have Alicia here tonight. So Alicia, we're glad to see you from WALB. <laughs> but, uh, but the grapevine and the paper, they usually watch the meeting. So um, after I make the uh, proclamation, I'm going to ask if any of you would like to say anything on behalf of the library. So use this time to talk about any programs you want to share or any special new things you have going on. Or you can just say thank you and go home. It's up to you. I'll leave that up to you. So, OK. So let me read to you this proclamation that I am proud to present on behalf of our city council. And this is proclaiming National Library, I can't talk, National Library Week, April 23rd through the 29th. And it says, whereas libraries provide the opportunity for everyone to pursue their passions and engage in lifelong learning, allowing them to live their best life, and libraries have long served as trusted institutions for all members of the community, regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, or socioeconomic status. Libraries strive to develop and maintain programs and collections that are as diverse as the populations they serve and ensure equity of access for all. Libraries adapt to the ever-changing needs of the community, continually expanding their collections, services, and partnerships, and you have certainly done that, and we appreciate that. Libraries play a critical role in the economic vitality of communities by providing internet and technology access, literacy skills, and support for job seekers, small businesses, and entrepreneurs. Libraries are accessible and inclusive places that promote a sense of local connection, advancing understanding, civic engagement, and shared community goals. And libraries are cornerstones of democracy, promoting the free ex exchange of information and ideas for all. And whereas libraries, librarians, library workers, and I'm going to add library board members, um, are joining library supporters and advocates across the nation to celebrate National Library Week. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Mayor Julie Smith, on behalf of the city of Tifton, hereby proclaim April the 23rd through the 29th as National Library Week in, in Tifton and encourage all residents to visit the Tifton Tift County Public Library to explore the tremendous amount of resources that are available to our community. So, Karen, congratulations. I will present this to you. So this is awesome. And let's give these ladies and gentlemen a round of applause for the work that they do. Thank you. And this doesn't really magnify your voice through here, but it does allow for the camera to pick up. So I'll let you, if you have any items you'd like to share with us. National Library Week is a very special week. Uh, libraries work hard all year round, all across the states, to bring you access to information, technology, tools, programs, but most importantly, connections to your community. Please come see us. Get your library card. It's free. We want you in our building. We would love to show you all the things we're doing. And if you won't come to us, we'll come to you. <laughs> I do. I would love to introduce my board member. This is Dr. Charlotte Klesman, our board chair, Dr. Uh, Chatterjee, Dr. Patilla, and I forgot your name. No. <laughs> and of course, Mr. Folk and some staff here, David Steyer, tech, uh, technology. Um, Mr. Klesman from our foundation is here. Angela is here from our circulation. And uh, we are all eternally thankful to everybody who sponsors us, donates to us, finances us, and encourages us. So please, thank you very much, and please come see us. And I will say, Karen has been so generous to open the library for the kids of the community, particularly anytime we have uh, any kind of special, like Rock the Block or um, Hometown Holidays. And they're even helping with our financial literacy class, which is so wonderful. They provide entertainment and activities for the kids to, so that mom and dad can come and be a part of the financial literacy classes that, uh, that we're working on. So it's a good partnership. So we're very appreciative. And thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, the next item on our agenda is to uh, swear in a new board member. I'm going to ask Robert Todd Green to please come forward.
Mr. Green, you dressed appropriately, I see. Thank you. <laughs> hey, it's good to see you. Okay, um, we do rely very much on citizens within our community to serve on various boards that we appoint people to, and we're very thankful to have you volunteer your time on the Tifton Tree Board. So this is your oath of office. And uh, once it's over, uh, once we get through with the signing in, or the swearing in, excuse me, then I'll turn this back over to Jessica and she'll get with you to sign it, then I'll sign it, then it'll, it'll all be done, but you'll be official as soon as we get through with this process. So what I'm going to do is to read the oath of office, and at the end of this I'll just ask you, do you affirm or do you swear? And that's, that's it. So the oath says that you, Robert Todd Green, do you go by Robert or Todd? Todd, okay, that you, Todd Green, do solemnly affirm that you will faithfully and impartially perform the duties as a member of the Tifton Tree Board of this city, and that you will support and defend the charter of the city of Tifton, as well as the constitution and laws of the state of Georgia and of the United States of America, that you shall attend all meetings of the body to which you are being appointed, unless providentially hindered, that you shall abide by the standards for conflicts of interest adopted by the city council and the rules of disclosure applicable thereto, and that unless disqualified by those standards for conflicts of interest, you will actively participate in all decisions of the body to which you are being appointed, and that you shall attend at city expense any special training mandated by the state of Georgia, or attend as scheduled any special training arranged by the city of Tifton. Do you affirm? Okay, it's official. You are now a member of the Tifton Tree Board, so thank you. Let's give Todd a round of applause and thank him for his service. We'll be talking about our boards more later in our uh, on an, in our agenda. But if anyone is interested in serving uh, in any capacity, um, if you'll just see Jessica, our city clerk, uh, she can let you know. Some boards have very specific qualifications and requirements. Some are a little more lenient. So, uh, but if anyone is interested, we'd love to work with you, and so you can see Jessica and, and get that information. All right. Our next item is public comments, and I've um, invited uh, Jordan Pope to come and address the council. He has, um, he reached out to me a, a time or two in the past and um, wanted us to, to have a conversation. So it was a conversation that I felt needed to be a, a conversation amongst all the council. So Jordan, I've asked you to come and, uh, and just share your concerns. Because we have you on the agenda normally with public input, it's just a two minute presentation and then that's it. You, you, this can be a conversation where we can talk and that's why it was important to me to have you on the agenda. So I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank y'all for having me. Um, I hope it's not more than two minutes. Uh, but anyway, as Julie said, I was invited uh, to come here because uh, Julie has answered every single one of my calls, and I have called a lot. And and she uh, <clears throat> she keeps telling me this is not the time or place for this. This this needs to be brought up in front of everybody. This isn't something that I can just continue to pound on her on. And you know. With all of us living in Tifton, I've, I've lived here 38 years my entire life, and um, I hold Tifton very dear to my heart. Um, we give where we can give, we, we do where we can do, and all we want to do is just make sure we keep creating a great place for our kids to grow up and it's safe, and uh, with that being said, our homeless problem has gotten a little out of control. Um, with that being said, I'm not, I'm not here to speak ill will on them. I'm not here to take away their rights. I'm not here to harass them. None of that. Uh, so I don't, want, I don't want my words here today to be like, oh, he's against that. I'm not against homeless people and their rights and everything else. Uh, what we're against is the continuous problem that they create, which is A, a mess uh, in Tifton everywhere they go. They don't clean up after themselves. They're continuously uh, camping out on, on our property, their property, um, and this was just a very uh, few people that were able to make it on such a last minute deal. Hey, I didn't probably do enough homework to get everybody to, to come here. Um, so anyway, I, I love seeing the community go out on Sundays and feed these people and they're offering showers. They've had people are donating portable showers. That's great, um, but that's on Sundays. Monday, their next meal is not guaranteed for them. 
So what they're doing for their next meal is, is causing chaos. Uh, they're stealing, causing problems. Um, and just to touch on a few points, Tifton is Tifton because <clears throat> of our interstate access. Uh, interstate, I-75, Highway 82, 125, 41, you know, all the, the major interstates, uh, inter intersections that, that come right through here at Chick-fil-A. So when they stop at Chick-fil-A, we'll use it as an example, uh, we finally got Dallas Hunt to clean up behind Chick-fil-A. There was a whole community back there. And if, when I say community, uh, Dallas did not know how many people that were living back there until we brought it to his attention. He thought they were more so just passing through under the bridge there. When we went back there and looked, there were probably 50 to 60 people set up camps uh, back there in the back. And that is right here in Tiff County. And you know what Dallas did was, was what a lot of people probably can't afford to do. Uh, there's a lot of people that own land that live out of town, and they probably don't even know that they're, they're homeless people living on their property. Uh, but when people stop in Tifton at Chick-fil-A, and they get out, and they walk their dog on the little grass parking lot right there behind it, and they're met by homeless people begging for money or who knows what else. Tifton has always thrived from our first impression. And our first impression is when they are coming from Atlanta and they stop here in Tifton before they go to Disney World, this is a, a stopping point. They stop here, they eat here, they, they spend the night here. You know, Tifton was voted numerous times number one best place to put a restaurant and a hotel and stay overnight because of what we have here. We have all the major chains. It's easy to stop. We've got to exit every mile. Tiffin's great. <clears throat> I've just seen so many people and, and heard of so many people not coming back. So if they're going to Orlando on the way home, they're not stopping in Tifton. They're going to stop in another town, try another town, maybe Cordell, maybe Valdosta, maybe somewhere else. And we're losing we're losing business this way. Um, you know, we go to El Caz quite a bit. The DOT owns the land right there behind El Cazador. There's a full camp that's set up right there behind El Cazador. I personally went over there a few times and asked them, you know, to try to relocate. They respectfully were very nice. Uh, they were like, yeah, we'll, we'll get out of here. They never moved though. Um, so, I mean, now where it used to, you know, we used to walk out of a restaurant, let the kids run around, you know, play around. When I walk out of a restaurant now, I'm holding my child's hand all the way to the car. We don't know what, you know, what these, their intentions are. We have no idea how hungry they are. We don't know what they would do to get what they need or a fix or whatever. And we just got to figure out a solution. Um, so, you know, Greyhound comes from all over, and, and I'm not sure if everybody, hopefully y'all are aware of it, but anyway, behind Church's Chicken, Greyhound drops off almost a busload a day. I don't know if it's every day, I don't know if it's twice a day, I don't know if it's once a week, but it's numerous times uh, that we see. Um, we wait, you know, we're, we're renovating uh, a building here, the old SunTrust, and we've had people, you know, wake, we have to wake them up, move them out of the, the drive through in the mornings, where our current office is now. We've got people sleeping in the alley up against the building. Uh, you know, the Lowe's have people defecating in their trash cans, uh, using their laundry mats as, as a shower, uh, using our electrical outlets at, at all our apartment complex. Though our tenant, we're losing tenants because they don't feel safe at some of our apartment complexes because these people are just coming up they're charging their phone, they're walking in the laundry room, using the, 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 the sink for you know, showers and whatnot. So anyway, there's, there's just all kinds of problems, uh, but the main one is when Greyhound drops them off here, there's no way for them to leave. Uh, there's not a, a ticket hub where they can go buy tickets. And then you say, well, they can just get on their phone and buy a ticket. Well, to buy a ticket on your phone, you gotta have a bank account and to get a bank account, these people don't have it. So if they want to leave, it's not like we can give them a $20 bill and say, hey, here's a, here's a, a start on getting you a ticket to where you want to go. There's nowhere to go buy that. So therefore, that $20 bill is probably, if they ask for $20, to, which I've been asked for for a bus ticket, 
they're lying. There's nowhere to go to get a bus ticket. Um, another main thing, uh, and Chris Dorman will, will back me up on this too, <clears throat> most of these uh, homeless people, as you can tell, have cell phones. Uh, they're plugging in, charging every night, and if they want a, a, a free, nice place to stay overnight and kind of start over, they know to now call the hospital or 911, say they have chest pains. We're a not-for-profit hospital. So when the hospital brings them in, they get a free night stay, they get a hot meal, they get some IVs, fluids, and they get to walk out of there, and we're stuck with the bill. Um, so it's endless on what we're you know, having to deal with every day. And I just wanted to bring this to y'all's attention. Like I said, I didn't come here with a whole list of solutions. I'd be more than happy to start a board or figure out, you know, what we can do. Um, but I've been told that, you know, Jordan, this, this is not just a Tifton problem. This is an everywhere problem. And with that being said, I will, I will say this. Like, we visited California a couple years ago, right before COVID happened. And I remember seeing all the homeless people. And in my mind, I was, I was thinking it was terrible that, that this is like this, but somebody let it get too far away. And I feel like that's what we're getting to. But when I left there, I was like, man, I'm glad to go back to Georgia so I don't have to see this, you know? Well, it's now on our front doorsteps. And if we don't stop and do something about it, or at least get a plan in action, then it's going to get so big so fast that it's going to be out of control. Um, so anyway, uh, I've called a couple other towns, talked to some council members uh, on what they're doing. And uh, Valdosta, for instance, uh, they've actually, I don't know if I'm using the correct terms, they've set a mandate or, or, or a law that if you are a landowner and there are homeless people camping on your property or whatever, they give you X amount of days to clean it up. So if it's an overgrown lot, uh, especially around their mall, uh, they actually had some, some homeless people sleeping in some vacant lots and stuff around their mall. They cleared it out. Same thing Dallas did. Bam, they moved on, right? Now, they probably moved on to somebody else's lot that's overgrown. And, but Tiffin's big, but it's not that big. And if we continue to, to make landowners take care of their property, and, you know, if it's overgrown, we need them to, to cut it. We need them to do something. Um, but anyway, I don't have the right solution. I don't have the, the right way, but I'm here to help. I've got a whole group back here that's willing to help and, and plenty more where that came from. If we need to get funds together, if we need to raise this, raise that, do whatever we can do. Um, you know, I, I was told by somebody the other day and it was a good point. They said, we just need to create a, a home for them, a shelter for them. And that's already created. Uh, if you go to Brother Charlie's, um, <clears throat> you, can, you can go there, but you, you have to be sober, you can't be on drugs, and you can't have a felony. Uh, well, sorry, a certain kind of felony. I think you can't have child molestation or something like that on you. So the people that choose to live on the streets choose to either be, A, they have a felony that's so bad that this home won't take them in, or B, uh, they're not sober enough and, and don't care to get off the drugs that they want to continue using. So therefore, that's the lifestyle that they chose. You know, I'm not saying that's what they want. I'm sure mental health is a big issue and you know, hopefully we can help them and do whatever we can do, but um, there are homes for them. It's just they choose to do something else. You know, and they may not be aware of all these too, so I don't know. Uh, well, yeah, um, let me jump in and kind of tell you what we've done because this has been it's certainly something that's been a concern of the council and um, several months ago um, I appointed a committee of MJ and Josh who's not with us not I meant to mention he's he's uh, not going to be joining us not yet previous commitment to work on this and the challenge is like you said one it, it is not a local problem it is a national problem I have through uh, my service to the community, been um, blessed to be able to serve on some, some very broad committees and organizations where I hear this everywhere I go. I just got back from the National League of Cities conference. The number one topic was homelessness. It's everywhere. Um, many years ago, like I shared with you, um, we lost the 
uh, probably 95% of the mental health facilities that we had in, in, in our area where people could go, where they could get medication, be evaluated. What's happening is they're self-medicating and, and it's through illegal street drugs and alcohol and that kind of thing. Um, I'd like for Rob, I know we've had great debate on what we can do. Um, everything that we do, we operate under the advice of our city attorney. We have to make sure when it's government, it has to run a little bit different than a, a private business. So, um, so uh, you know, I know we've talked about panhandling. I know we've talked about vagrancy. I know we've talked about um, people who, who stand on the side of the road and hold a sign that says, you know, I'm a homeless veteran. Can you spare five dollars or whatever? Um, and the rights that those people have that we have to be very careful not to overstep their rights. And I know it's, a, it's, an, it's an odd balance of, well, where do my rights begin and end? That's a conversation Doug and I have all the time at home. Where do my rights begin if my neighbor's dogs are barking? Where, you know, where's my peace and quiet? And then, but then my dogs bark and then the Gibbs are probably saying the same thing. So rights of the community are very specific that I always go back to my attorney, uh, our attorney, who doesn't represent me, but represents our organization. Rob, I don't know if you might want to add anything to what, where we are so limited and how we can deal with some of this, just so we can have the conversation. One of the problems I think, you know, when you talk about private property, we've got a problem with people on mm -hmm. private property. The city has ordinances, basically, that prohibits people from obstructing sidewalks and being on public property that obstructs pedestrians and traffic and what have you you know, lingering, loitering, you know, on public property. Um, that's certainly a problem. And of course, you can look throughout the country of everybody that's dealing with the same issues that George's talking about. One of the problems that you have, naturally, is that you could cite these people for a violation of the ordinance. They wind up in jail. <clears throat> and then we're paying for the jail. And then they get out and they're right back out on the street. Solutions is the problem. What is the solution? And you know, one of the things, you know, the Senate just recently passed as Senate Bill 62 that basically prohibits a city or a county from not enforcing their laws on, you know, uh, homeless people. Mm -hmm. So, but, but then Athens, I think they have created a homeless camp, you know, uh, so the solutions are, are difficult. We have laws on the books that could keep the public, you know, the sidewalks and the streets clear. I think when it comes to a private property owner, you're really talking about a trespass and telling them that, you know, their, you know, their presence is unwanted and they would have to leave. But then again, you're still dealing then with arresting them all and putting them in jail. And then, you know, then you've got that, that issue. It is a, uh, it's very complicated, you know, in, there's a lot of critics of Senate Bill 62 because it just says, well, you're just criminalizing homeless people. So uh, I certainly think that, to George's point, is that what's the solution and let's get to it? Because if we delay, it could get, it's just going to get worse. So I think that City Council, people that work in the community need to think about what is the what's the solution mm -hmm. is it is it a homeless camp are you segregating these people in a, in a camp um, certainly you know some type of housing that's the biggest problem throughout the country is how do you house these homeless people I think these some people from what I see is that they just assume live on the street so um, Bottom line, we have laws on the books, protects, you know, protects public property from, from public camping and, and loitering. Uh, private property owners will have to have their own solution as a, yeah. a trespass. Well, and you mentioned Dallas Hunt's property. Their property is not in the city. That's a county. So I would advise going to the county with this same concern. Now, do homeless people, and most of Tiffin don't know where the city limits line is and where it's not and that kind of thing. But um, unless we're doing this together, so if, if uh, let's assume Dallas's property was in the city of Tifton, 
and he goes and cleans it up and now that encampment moves three blocks down to the old um, what used to be Sunny's years ago which is outside the city limits mm -hmm. and the county says that's private property we're not going to do anything have we we haven't solved anything so it's got to be it's got to be a joint effort between the city and the county and the state and the federal government um, I know that the state approved last year the mental health bill speaker Ralston that was something really important to him it didn't pass this year so it's not it's, it's not gonna happen so here we are now I'm not saying it's not ever gonna happen but it didn't get approved this year so there are things, but even with, let's say it did get approved, it's going to be years before we see the, the positive end result of that. It just, and who pays for, you know, who pays for this? You know, local government is already, you know, we want our taxes as low as possible. We want our land values as high as possible. We want a good mix of business and industry and arts and culture and diversity and all the things that make for an amazing community. Um, when you open yourself up for that, though, you also get these challenges. And I don't know what the answer is. I certainly will sit here and tell you I have no idea what to do. I feel very, as a Christian woman, I'm very compassionate. That could be me, homeless on the streets. It could very easily be me. It could be you. It could be you. It could be any of us. And thank God I have a home to go lay my head down at at night. So from a, you know, a, a, a compassionate human being you know hoping to um, embrace all people of all walks of life that's a challenge um, I've been at the gas station pumping gas and someone will walk up and ask me for 10 bucks it's like you don't want to do that here you need to keep moving you need to keep going um, I probably get as many calls people asking us to do more as in feeding and housing and clothing than less there's, there's a, a, a perception that if you do all these things for people, it just attracts more. It's kind of like feeding the stray cats. You just get more stray cats. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, I don't, but I, I don't have the answer. I don't well, know that any of That's us what Valdosta was saying is they said their only solution right now was that uh, what was working is keeping them uncomfortable. If they're yeah. allowing them to continue their camps and not moving them or just shooing them down the road you shoot them down the road and they're coming right back yeah and he said well, know, so therefore yeah. we're making these people clear their land mm -hmm. take care of their land not only mow it once and and spend the money to shred right. it but Keep to continue it continue yeah. mowing it like this isn't just a problem of like it's been three weeks you need to mow your grass this is like there's people hiding in there sure. you know and you know it it's it's all about their rights until something like the other day happened uh, at Orr Park, right down the street at, at a kid's baseball game. Uh, a little girl walked into the bathroom, public bathroom, and there was a homeless man in the girl's bathroom. And he was like, oh, let me get out so y'all can use the restroom. He was very respectful. Mom let him use the bathroom. They walked out, he walked back in. He pretty much has claimed that place. Back when I was little, my parents didn't walk, you know, we just didn't get walked to the bathroom. Now it's like we walk our kids every restaurant, you know, like uh, it's just different that we have to do that now uh, because yeah. of, we don't know do what that know, guy's intentions are. I do know that our police chief works uh, at a police department, um, do a couple of things. I do know that they, they patrol pretty extensively. They also have, they carry with them a list of resources. Uh, that was something that we asked them to do so that when they come upon somebody, it's here's the information for brother charlie's here's you know if you're a, a, an abused woman and you're out on the streets here's here's ruth's cottage you know here are the resources that we're aware of so that at least you have a place to go and move on um and i don't know if, chief if you want to i'm kind of putting you on the spot with any comment i don't know if you want to say anything or not but i know that they no okay um i know that they do but but if a, if a private property owner says i don't care and we have a lot of those um, hang on one second. We have a lot of those that say, I don't care. I'm not, mm -hmm. we're Chief. stuck. Okay, what, what were you just um, He mentioned the homeless camp that's not in the city limits. There's, there's three different areas right by Shorten Paul that is in the city limits. Right. right. Uh, we've got a sleeping uh, in deer stands that we built that we're for sale by 41 there. Mm -hmm. We're running out of there. There's a homeless camp right behind the depot uh, across the street from Shorten Paul behind Bascom. There's another one behind uh, Little Electric up off of Bellevue. 
and uh, it, it's, it's a mess. Yeah. Um, I've got a tenant that, across the street uh, from that that's renting from me that keeps his doors locked. And if you go to see him, one of his customers goes to see him, you knock on the door. If I go to see him, I knock mm -hmm. on the door, and they'll come and look, open the shades, and, mm -hmm. and see it's me and let me in. Right. Um, yesterday, um, oh no, it was Friday afternoon, uh, I walked over to that tenant's office and was um, panhandling, trying to, trying to get money. You know, I mean, it's, it's a problem, and, and you, you know, when uh, Dallas cleaned that area up, all it did was move them over to Fulbitt's right. side. And, um, you know, there's absentee landowners mm -hmm. in there. Um, you, you know, I, the city used to have uh, the Main Street program, used to do stuff, a, a grant to help people uh, fix up the front of their building to, to make it better. Uh, maybe they could do something like that to help defray some of the costs mm -hmm. of uh, of cleaning up some yeah. of the property. Yeah, they, 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 do, they do still they have still the facade do ramp. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, the problem is moving, uh, cleaning up property, moving to the next one, okay? Making it uncomfortable, they move somewhere where they're not. So we haven't solved the issue. You know, then to, now, what is the issue? I mean, one of them is clearly mental health. One mm -hmm. of them is clearly veterans with PT, PTSD. If, mm -hmm. if you don't think, PTSD with veterans is a problem. I can tell you to some personal stuff, but until we can get the state, or in the meantime, we need to get the state, and and you've got a connection on the the state side to go back to funding some of this mental health, and because there are people that are out there, they're just going to live on the street like me. That that's all they want to do. But there's some that just they have nowhere else to go. They are they their minds are, are going, they need help, okay? So, we, well, we're having I, trouble bringing some of our property because of the homeless issue. I, I, I don't doubt that, and, and, and I'm not downplaying it is, but my point is move, moving them, if we could load them all up and move them to Tifton, to Jordan Point, the next day there's a bus coming with some more coming in. Well, first so, of all, we need to figure out why Greyhound is doing this. Like, if there's not a hub here, we shouldn't be dropping them off here. Uh, and I, that, that's I number one. It, let's get let's get somebody that has the the say so to call Greyhound and say, you know, listen, Joe found the Greyhound bus that that they were dropping them off of. Walked up onto the thing and started talking to the guy. And he's like, all I can tell you is, this community, when I say community, the homeless community has made it known that Tifton has made it comfortable for them to live here. And if we are known for that then it's only a matter of time before we're not the reading capital of the world, we're the homeless capital of the world uh, for small Georgia. And I don't want to be a part of that. I just want, I want to be able to let my kids ride their bike down the street and not worry about if they're going to get snagged or, or whatever. And that's kind of where we're at today. So, you know, it, the homeless problem, like if we don't start a solution now, this problem is just like raising a child. If we continue to just let it snowball, if your child's 10 years old and all you've done is shush them and just push them back away, then by the time they're 10 years old, you've lost them. You know, you've not, you've not done anything about it. You can't go back and fix 10 years worth of problems. You know, you got to fix it every day and stay at it every day. And if we continue to stay at it and all get together and figure out a solution. I think, I think what you're not seeing though is we are. We really are. And, um, we we understand the situation and like i said it is it is a national epidemic no different than covid which was an international you know pandemic it's an epidemic homelessness drug addiction drug problems um it's just you know it, it saddens me it breaks my heart to see the, I've, I've seen kids that are home you know it's just it breaks your heart yeah. um we do work at it every day. I know our police department, I know the government moves very slowly. We, we do have to be careful. Everybody, according to our constitution, does have the right to exist. And so um, we have to be very delicate in how we handle that. I don't want to downplay your message because we hear your message, yeah. but we are so limited with funding, with what we can do, and part of us, it sounds like we're saying we need to help them so we can get them 
up to a point where they can move on and move on with their lives in a positive way. But if we do that, then there's just gonna be more. And who pays for that? That's expensive. I know there have been organizations that have tried to start programs. Um, like I can't remember the one that was, our church was gonna be involved in it. Um, all the churches, I can't remember what the name of it was. Anyway, it was gonna be, the churches would have their facilities and teach them uh, these, you know, people wanted parenting classes or resume builder classes or something whatever. Something promised or something. Yeah, yeah. anyway, it doesn't matter. But um, I don't know what the answer is. Um, so I don't want to downplay um, the concern because we have the concern as well. Um, I'm like you. I grew up here. My business is here. My family's here. My grandchildren are here. This is where I want us to all be. We're here by choice. And, um, but, you know, I, I don't know what the... Uh, I don't know what the answer is, so that's why I wanted to, to start the conversation. Um, it's got to be a united effort between city and county government first, and then it's got we've got to get the state resources and the federal resources pulled in. Um, you know the, the the horrific drugs that are on the street now. People take them and they they it's it's awful. Why anybody would do that? I don't know. But they're self medicating. That's all they know to do to try to feel better or try to escape whatever's going on in their head. So. I don't know, Rob. One of the things we need now is like the panhandle. Um, we have to be very careful, you know, when we adopt our panhandling ordinance, uh, because you can't violate free speech. Somebody can hold up a sign and say, "Please give me money." They can come up to you and say, "Hey, can you spare a dollar?" You can't stop that, but you can stop aggressive panhandling if they're being overbearing. So it's a it's a very difficult problem. Again, I don't think we start talking about their rights, they don't have the right to obstruct the sidewalk. They don't necessarily have the right to be on private property without that person's permission. It gets down to enforcement, and then you start enforcing it. As a landowner, they move on someplace else. It sounds like to me that the landowners, you know, who are suffering the issues, they need to band together to say, you're not going to be on my property. Uh, and from the city standpoint, naturally, we can enforce what's public property. But again, that we get into the issue about what are we going to And we do. can enforce what's on private property at the request of the property owner. So if Mr. Jones has um, a property or Jay or you know, whoever it is and calls 911 and asks for Steve to come you know, send some officers out there or a code enforcement or whoever it is, um, but the, you know, the thing I would always tell people, you know, if you feel threatened, first you need to call 911. If you see something, you know, like the, the guy in the, the bathroom, yeah, he might have been very respectful, but somebody should have called 911 and said, there's a man in, the, in, the, in, in this lady's restroom mm -hmm. and that's not right. Let's get an officer over here and move him on down the road. You know, so um, anyway, I don't know what the, uh, I don't know what the next steps are. I'm open to conversation, um, whatever. I, I'd suggest you go to the county make this same presentation, tell them you've come here. Maybe we put together a, a, a joint, joint city, task county, force. some private citizens. I, it, it's got to and, and go from there. Yeah. I, I don't know what else to do. Any comments you want to make, Emily? Any, any thoughts as the manager? <laughs> no. Jack hit the nail on the head. I think a lot of the root cause is when we lost state funding for mental patients, uh, mental health patients. And, you know, a lot of times what happens is if the police chief was to go out and, and to arrest all of them, before we take them to the jail, they're going to they're gonna want to go to the hospital. They have to be evaluated. Of 100 people, we may be able to put two in jail for trespassing. I mean, the county's not going to accept them because of the liability of them being a mental health patient. So mm -hmm. it really starts there. Um, our police chief has done a really good job at contact, working with the county, one, but contacting property owners to say, hey, you have people living on your property, can we run them out, are you okay with that? So we're trying to make those efforts, but then it's like one of you said, they're, they're just kind of moving around to the different areas. So mm -hmm. you know, what is the solution? I'm glad you brought up Valdosta, the interim city manager down there, I'll be with him Friday. So I'd be glad, interested to see what he has. Yeah. Um, I have talked to some of my colleagues, other city managers around that have this issue communities very similar to our size um, who have a way bigger issue and it's actually bringing on criminal activity. Um, we, we're not there yet and I'm very thankful for that. So I'm um, looking forward to exploring you know, different options. 
Um, I think it starts with the property owners. We do have property owners that we call and say, hey, this is going on, well, I don't care. I'm not there, I don't see it, I don't care. You know, how do we enforce that? It's the only difficult part. Good deal, thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right, I don't wanna close out the discussion without a, uh, what's the next step? So what's the next step? <laughs> Oh, well, the next step is, is broad. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the main things that everybody have to understand that it's going to take a collective that's not just one side, not mm -hmm. city, county, mm -hmm. uh, not just on the business side. It's, it's going to take an uh, entire collective of committees, um, mm -hmm. solutions that come up with um, crisis response. So we got to do preventive measures, and we have to take care of the current problems at the same time. So those are multiple ways that we have to look at the situation and try to get an approach to it. And again, it's gonna go back to, it's gonna take everyone to pitch in. So we need some type of, um, I don't know if it's gonna be a community forum or a sense, but we need to uh, kind of look at all the, from the business side to the, to the uh, personal side, where we all can uh, put our solutions in the hat because has to be a solution driven approach mm -hmm. all right just coming up with a solution to hide them away or yeah. it's going to be a, a continuous thing forever all right so um i i'm thank i thank you for coming with your concerns and everything um but i truly believe that it is a situation where we we're going to need to attack it from different areas um so any solutions that you have, any solutions from uh, uh, from the city side, county side, the business side, we are gonna have to come together and put our heads together and, and attack this in a bite-sized way. You know, it's, it's not gonna work if we just try to say, okay, let's just build a housing camp for them. Housing is the core of everything, but that goes back to affordable housing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it goes in, a, in an area where it's so many different ways we have to look at the situation that we, we are gonna get lost in the sauce in a sense, trying to pick it apart and send people in different directions. So I think uh, one thing between the city and the county, um, there's gonna have to be uh, a coming together on that side of thing. And I think that's where it's gonna have to start. And, and this is a, a subject where uh, I've, I really feel that it can be in a unifier for the community as well. So it's, it's everybody's problem at this point. Mm -hmm. It was just a problem in the poor, poor side of town, uh, and now it's, it's grown all over the country in a sense. So uh, this could be a, a way for us, us all to come together as one and come up with a solution for once in a in, in, a, in a time frame where we all can work together and get this taken care of. So I'm on board. Um, I'll take the lead on, on um, from my side of things, uh, from my district. Uh, I'll reach out to the county. I have no problem with that. Um, like I said, I'm here to um, be, in a, be a solution to everybody that, and that I can be. So um, again, thank you, thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, this is uh, some of the information that you brought. I didn't know um, because I have a whole another side of problems that I'm dealing with in my district. Um, but I find, uh, some of this, the information that you brought me let me know, hey, that is another problem in my district as well. So again, thank you for coming uh, with the information. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, so again, uh, with the mayor, I think we all can come up with a solution together if we just tap into all the sources from the local to the state and then eventually in federal we'll see what what is being done on the federal side as well all right do you mind reaching out to mr carter at the i time? already have um, okay. i was going to say this is um jim and i have actually talked a few times about this topic mm -hmm. and um it's kind of the same conversation that i get when i call my other colleagues well what are y'all doing you know mm -hmm. what are y'all doing with government our hands are really really tight on a lot of aspects so jim is very much aware of the situation him and i have talked um last week i think it was we even had a conversation about this so he's very much aware right. as well as um their commissioners yeah, yeah. i mean any, any solution to your point about you can't just set up a camp mm -hmm. you've got to deal with the root issues is you know whether it be drug addiction whether it be alcohol 
abuse, whether it be mental health, until you address those issues, you haven't solved the problem. Because that's what, in my view, is driving the majority of it. Some just trying to live out in the outside. Yeah, I mean, that comes from empl employment and income as well. Unless you get those issues straightened, then it, then it brings a smaller subset of, of people that are just that you have to deal with separately. But those are, to me, are the three driving things, and, and they won't go away without some help. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we really got to look at the what percentage uh, from the whole 100%. We, we just have to determine, like, okay, 20% uh, categorized in, in a way and see which ones that are achievable uh, the soonest. Those are, those are, I think, that one way we can approach it is a percentage way wise. So, yeah. but, I think personally, we just figure out why we're driving people off here and stop it. Yeah. Now, I don't even care if we figure out why we're driving people off here. Just say, where are they people, coming from? Don't know. Everywhere. Well, I mean, right. Greyhound is, is a transport, so yeah. that's. Ralph, since that is a private business, the city can't intervene on that. Yeah. So, see, there's another. Yeah, yeah this is a free country we can travel. Hey, it's this it's a free country. I can Yeah, I understand. That's it's a free country. I can go anywhere I want. The problem is though is is they're dropping them off here because that community has of homeless people around have found that tip is a good place to go to. And what we need to do is find out what make it where it's not as good place to want to go. Yeah, I get I get what you're saying with the deterrent aspect. I agree with that. That is just one solution. That is not the only solution. So I'm not saying that is that what you're saying is, is not doesn't need to be done. It does. It's just one side. But it's only uh, by just doing that w one thing, it's not going to work uh, because Greyhound is going to come through here forever as long as they're in business. And there are other ways that they're getting here besides Greyhound. So I, f I feel that definitely what you're saying, if we, we can, but again, that's gonna run into legal, all right? So again, we have to walk delicate with this situation because when the legal aspect comes into it, you're, working, you're dealing with human rights. Yeah. And it could be a fiasco for but, um, all of us. Yeah, for me, on the standpoint <coughs> of being on the homeless committee, as far as for the coming from the city of Tipton, the things that we have done, we have set up a committee and we've worked on that. We've also went to Brother Charlie's, we've got the details for each and everything that they can do to be accepted and all the other uh, out resources that we have. Our uh, police force, fire, they have the notes to give those people at the time um, to do that. We've also listened to you guys today and um, we're gonna keep checking off that list to make it right. And that's the only thing we can do. So you guys need to just continue to help us with the information that you get and we're gonna have to tackle on our end as far as a government situation on how it can be handled within decent and in order. Because we're not gonna go and just run people away and we're not just gonna haul them off out of town because then the beautiful light of the city of Tipton that we've all talked about has now gone to darkness just because we have some homeless people that we want to get out the way. I have property too. They lay out on my bench all the time. I go up, I picked them up and told them to get on out of here or what do you need to keep moving or what is it? I've asked the questions. You know, it's hard, but every day I wake up, I know I could be right there laying on that bench. So. We're either going to come collective and we're going to make it right. And that comes from a, me as a city constituent or as a councilman or police, city manager, any of my colleagues that's up here today, we've listened. But the city of Tipton has started our checklist. And we're going down that list and we're going to get it right. But we're going to do it in the way that it's supposed to be done. And that's all we Again. can do. And I get it. Trust me, I get it. Yeah, it's not. It's Everybody not, up here has property. Yeah, and it's not new. This is this, this is, is something, nothing new. Yeah, I have this, a. It's I have new a, I have because a it's spilling over and everything. I mean, we're right downtown in the heart of the city. Every day I walk out my door, I got somebody charging their phone. Every day, yeah. every single day, and I got a one-year-old, and I'm holding him. But I, I, I'm not scared either. 
my property value hadn't went down. But we got to be careful how we walk on it. You can't just say, let's get them out of here. I'll, hey, you know, I get it. We want everything to look prim and proper around here. I want it to look prim and proper. I don't want them out here sleeping in deer stands at people's business or none of that. But we need to do the protocol. Find somebody in the deer stand, call 911 immediately. Hyman, let's get them over there. Let's get them out of there. Trespassing. Boom. Got to lock them up. We're going to lock them up. Okay, now we're going to pay taxes on them. That's fine. But you got to start a solution. Same situation. We just got to work together. So let's start a homeless task force. But at the same time, we got to go have that same conversation over there with the county. Because all we're going to do is just keep running the hamster wheel. We're going to move them out the city. They're going to knock some trees and woods down, and they're going to find some more trees and woods, and they're going to hang out. So everybody has a, some real estate background and Q public. Let's find these people that own this land that has trees grown up and everything. Let's get to call them and ask them, do you want them to stay or do you want them to go? They want them to go. Well, what do we need to get it cleared off? And then maybe it'll make it a little uncomfortable, you know, but as far as the Greyhound situation, anybody can buy anybody a ticket, you know, and really, we talking about the homeless people. Did y'all know the state prison? That's where they drop their state prisoners off to? I've seen it all day long. That's the drop off for the state prisoners. They've been doing that for years. So that's worse than the homeless. I don't know what he got out of jail for, but I've seen it. And that's where they drop off. That's the drop off. Right there. All right. We have lots more conversations to have, lots more work to do. So if you'll continue talking to Jim, um, let's us keep this on the radar, um, continue to, to work on this, and um, yep. that's all we can offer at the moment. Okay? Yeah, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Okay, let's move on with our uh, agenda. The next items, items number four through 10, are the consent agenda. And as you know, gentlemen, those items can be um, approved together or we can take those individually. So I'll take a motion concerning the consent agenda. I move we approve all of them in total. Okay. A second. All right, so I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. Um, the next item under new business is the finance committee appointment. And um, Josh is not able to be here with us tonight. His son is in a sports event. so. Um, He's with his family this evening, but I would like to appoint Josh uh, to join Jack on the finance committee. Uh, we are neck deep in budgeting right now, so uh, so y'all, you gentlemen have your work cut out for you. Um, and, and the finance committee does not make all of the approval for the council for the, um, for the budget. The finance committee are the ones that really get down in the weeds and the details and the specifics and then will bring us back recommendations and reports. So, anybody on the council has access to the information that's being reviewed so larry if you don't mind as the finance committee meets if you could send that information out so everybody has access and can review it and then they can offer suggestions and have the conversation back the other way to the committee so okay perfect i know you will so and as always if you have any specific questions on budget or accounting or, or anything just just reach out to larry or lisa they're always very generous with their time so um so I'm going to appoint Josh uh, as the Finance Committee um, appointment. Our next item on our agenda is our board report. And um, so my computer keeps going out. Hang on just a second. Uh, let's see. Um, as you know, we just swore in Todd for the uh, Tifton Tree Board. Um, we do have um, some other boards. Let me scroll down here. Kind of lost my train of thought there. The uh, housing authority. Yeah. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk to y'all about, and I sent an email out. Um, what we're finding is some of our boards are very specific in how the board has to be made up. For example, the Downtown Development Authority. That's that's determined in state law. What the comp, how that board is to be made up. And there's, whether we like it or not, that's just the way it is. But what we're seeing um, with some of our board members is there may be someone who has a very specific area of expertise that would greatly benefit our board 
and I'm going to use an arborist on the tree board or an ag teacher on the tree board or something like that, but they live outside the city limits. So we, um, we've always followed the, I guess it's in our charter, the policy of, for the most part, someone has to be a city resident to be appointed to a board. We did go back several years ago and added that layer of asking the board to also vet the person that was interested in serving because we wanted to make sure that, um, that the boards would work well together and that they, they had input in who they were accepting onto their board. So we do have that. But I didn't know if the council might be interested in looking at a, a situation where we might say something along the lines of um, preference would be giving, given to a city resident. However, if there is particular expertise or education or, or knowledge or training that might benefit the board, um, we have one of our board members who's gone through the training to serve on the board. They were city resident, participated, board enjoys their participation. They feel like they're a good board member. Last year they moved outside the city limits. They're still in Tiff County, but they've received all that training. And it's like, wow, then that just goes away. So, you know, I, I, I just want to throw that out there for consideration. Let's, let's don't cut off my nose, spite our face. You know, no, I know. Or throw the baby out with the bathwater. I know. If somebody, we want to help the city. Yes. If there's somebody that, in this instance, why wouldn't we put them back on? Yeah. Now, we could give, like, your, to your point give preference. preference if there's somebody else at the city resident and wants to go on okay well we're going to give precedent preference but not have it just clear that okay right. well, you're out right i mean i think we should have that you know yeah. that leeway it just makes sense and it would make the board better that's i think our, it would that's yeah. our goal okay. anyway yeah, exactly strengthen the board any thoughts gentlemen do y'all have any i know you and i had talked a little bit about it and you, you didn't have any issue you no. Okay. Sure. Rob, what would we need to do? Is that just something, do we, would we need to just say that's what we're going to do, or do we need to? There's just a few boards that are really addressing our ordinances that I've seen, which is the Zoning Board of Appeals, and Historic Preservation Commission, mm -hmm. those are uh, those are addressed specifically in our ordinances. And I'm not familiar, going back to the tree boards, the other boards, that's beyond my time. I don't know how those have been created in the past or if there's even any um, any policies that are attributable to the qualifications mm -hmm. to sit on those boards. Well, but, for, um, for example, the Housing Authority. Dr. Pertilla would like to be appointed to the Housing Authority. I think she'd be an outstanding board member, but she's a county resident. She doesn't live within the city. But we have properties, the, the Tifton Housing Authority has properties outside the city, so. I think the best thing to do at this point is uh, have Jessica go ahead and give, give me a list of all the boards. Okay. And then determine, do we have anything currently that we, you know, as far as their qualifications? Housing Authority, Julie, for some reason I got something in my back of my mind that the state law may have something to okay. do with that. Okay, and it may. I want to look at that. I did look at the URA. Yeah. You are, the state law and URA yeah. says you can do you know, what Well, if, for example, it, and I, I don't want to, one of our applicants for our tree board, um, she's an entomo forest entomologist working in outreach encouraging habitat development in urban and suburban areas of pollinator habitat. That, I mean, she's perfect. For the tree board, but she lives outside the city limits. But so. see, right now, I don't know that there's any disqualification for that. Yeah. Okay. No, it's not. I mean, that's one. <laughs> I don't want to call anybody out, but a few years ago, y'all made me do this policy, I know. and before, all we did was accept an application. I didn't care. I remember there's and there's somebody that even put a fake name. I didn't even check, check that they were a real person. And so we started just looking into it more. So I'd, yeah. I mean, I spent a lot of time um, at the beginning of COVID developing mm -hmm. that policy. Um, and we have like 11 boards. I mean, so in every yeah. board, there Maybe was something different. different. Maybe it was their bylaws and an ordinance. And then we adopted um, uh, board qualifications if they were not stated anywhere else. And that was the number one thing that y'all um, wanted was a a city resident. Yeah. I mean, we could maybe possibly change that to a property owner, but it didn't narrow down the people. And so a lot of times, you know, I bring those to you all 
but I just make it yeah. clear that they don't meet the policy. And our preference, my preference is the city rather. Right, that's the, the number preference. Number one, that's rather yeah. that. Yeah. But we need that. Yeah. Anyway. Just, you know, so, um, what we can do tonight, if, if y'all would like, there are some that obviously do qualify, you know, that we could go ahead and reappoint. Um, uh, let's see. Um, so, for example, Jimmy Dill on the Keep Tiff Beautiful Board, um, his term has expired. He would like to be reappointed. And then there are two other applicants for T Keep Tiff Beautiful. Uh, Andrea Albright and Jeremy Lovelace. They both are city residents, and so they so we could go ahead and fill uh, fill those if if, if y'all so choose. Um, historic preservation. We have um, we have three that do qualify: uh, Adam Simmons, Franklin Will, and Jeff Robbins. Um, and the HPC has recommended uh, them all being reappointed. Justin is the gentleman that I was referring to that has moved outside, but if we could address that later. Um, now, the other thing, Jessica, let me make sure I'm right on this. They do continue to serve until they're either reappointed, at which time their service does continue, or we replace them. So they continue mm -hmm. to serve until that vacancy is... Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like we're going to leave someone without a quorum or something if we don't do something tonight. Or does the historic preservation, do they just have to be in the, in the city? They don't have to live in the historic district? Just great, just okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... Um, can you check on, uh, Rob or Jessica, can you check for me on being able to appoint Dr. Pertilla to the Housing Authority? I'm looking at it as okay. we speak. Okay, if you could have an answer in two minutes, that'd be great. <laughs> we can come back to that. Um, all right, what I'm gonna recommend, if someone would be willing to make an appoint, uh, excuse me, a motion to appoint, uh, reappoint Jimmy Dill to keep Tiff Beautiful, and then to also appoint, uh, Andrea Albright and Jeremy Lovelace to keep Tiff beautiful. That will be three appointments to that board. So moved. Second. I okay. said right, so motion second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. And then on Historic Preservation Commission, uh, if someone would please make a motion to reappoint Adam Simmons, Franklin Will, and Jeff Robbins. Make a motion. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay, so we have motion second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And Rob, have you found that answer yet? I think I'm there, just about. Okay. So the tree board, we can't appoint that person yet until mm -hmm. we, we could? Yes. I mean, I, I think I put them on all of those. So the tree board, it says that they just have to be a county resident. Okay. All right. All right, then we have uh, for the Tifton Tree Board, Lori Felton um, is no longer on that board, so that left a vacancy. And Ms. McCarty that I referenced a few minutes ago uh, has a very impressive resume, and so she does meet the board requirements, so I'll take a motion to her. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Second. All right, so we have a motion in two seconds. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Jessica, has that got us all caught up now other than Dr. Pertilla potentially? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Well, besides um, Justin Golden, and that yeah. is a part of our ordinance, so if we want to make um, that change. That change, okay. Okay. All right. Um, we still have a form. <laughs> We're just about done. Uh, all right. Larry, financial report. Any, any updates? Madam Mayor and Council, just to give you an update, we're going to have to do the first three quarters of this budget year. We're still doing very good. Uh, looking at the general fund, revenues are up above budget at, at uh, 13 million and the expenses are under budget. I give all the credit to the department heads. They're doing a great job managing their expenses. Uh, expenses are 11 million 388, which gives us net revenues over expenditures of 2 million 187. So we have a good cushion heading into the last quarter of the year where revenues will fall off a little bit. So, uh, but we should finish the year strong. So uh, we're looking good there. On the enterprise funds, on the water fund, uh, total revenues are 3,257. Total expenditures, 1,858. Net revenues over expenditures of 1,399. So that's doing very strong. Uh, sewer fund, total revenues, 3,859. Total expenditures, 2,846. With net revenues over expenditures of 1,012. 
Then the gas fund total revenues, four million seven nineteen. Total expenditures, four million two eighty six, with net revenues over expenditures of four hundred thirty two thousand. And then the solid waste total revenues, three million forty five thousand, to expenditures of two million four oh seven. Net revenues over expenditures of six hundred thirty eight thousand. So uh, all the funds are looking good and. Uh, we're holding our own. Okay, excellent. Anybody have any questions? Gentlemen, you good? I'm good. Okay, okay. thank you, Larry. And uh, my door is always open. Just oh, I want you to use it. Don't worry. I'll be coming to see you a lot. Yeah, let's go down where the third floor is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I welcome your visit. Okay, thank you so much. All right, Emily, your city manager report. Um, just one thing uh, we will start this Saturday and kick off Georgia Cities Week. Um, it's always a great celebration for us to highlight um, not only our employees, but the services that we provide to the great community. Um, Saturday, this Saturday, we will kick it off with um, Earth Day citywide cleanup with KTB. Um, we have registration forms out online if you're interested in participating in that. That will be um, Saturday morning from 9 to 12. And then Saturday night, we will have Mike Night at the TIFF Theater. We're, this is a first time event, so we're pretty excited about that one. Um, throughout the week, we will spotlight um, various boards and committees, um, do some Tifton trivia online. Um, Tuesday morning, we will have a business incentive information session for all business owners at 8.30 right here in the council chambers. This is a really good presentation for um, any business owners or anybody interested in starting a business in Tifton to come and understand the incentives that the city can offer you. Uh, we will spotlight our Administrative Professions Day on Wednesday. We will spotlight all employees on Thursday. And then Friday um, is a kid's favorite. It is a touch a truck event at Cato Night Parking Lot right across the street at 5 o'clock. We'll have tractors, first responders, vehicles. The library will be there. We'll have lots of um, face painting and games and food and fun. Um, it's always a good event. And then we will wrap up the week with a family uh, movie night, Saturday night. All week long, we will be um, holding a student art contest. We have received lots of submissions through the school system. Um, private home, uh, home um, school children have submitted. Um, I was really shocked to see all the great artwork that we had coming in. Uh, we do have plans to display that all here at City Hall um, in the lobby, so you can stop by and see it all week long, and we'll announce our winners then. And then we'll also have a scavenger hunt at Fullwood Park, City Hall, and downtown Tifton. So we're excited to see the winners, and we have a big week planned. Um, the Georgia Cities Week Committee has done a really, really good job at tying all the pieces together from all aspects. So we're excited about the week. They've done a great job. And in the middle of all that, we'll have the Georgia Municipal Association Board meeting here yes, in Tifton. Yes, we will. So. <laughs> it's going to be a busy week. As if there's not enough going on. <laughs> Mary, so, the answer to that question, we have seven members. Yes. And one just has to be a resident of the housing authority in the city. Okay, so. so resident, there was something. Okay. One has to so be. I could go ahead and appoint Dr. Patilla tonight. Yes. Okay. Jessica, I'm appointing Dr. Patilla uh, to, uh, to the housing authority. That's a mayor's appointment, so I appoint Dr. Patilla. All right, gentlemen. Council comments? We talked about a lot tonight. <laughs> yeah, we have. Uh, in reference, to, for me, I guess, the meeting was largely about the homeless. Mm -hmm. um, I want to read something from uh, an author called uh, Daniel Quinn. And I think our approach should be organized around this quote. And it goes, don't try to drive the homeless into places we find suitable. Help them survive in places they find suitable. So I think if we can come up with solutions that bar on that comment, mm -hmm. on That's that statement, we can, we can definitely make a difference. Very good. Thank you for that. You're Thank welcome. you very much. MJ? Um, no, just really thankful for the group coming today to let us know about those, yeah. those, uh, those items. And, uh, you know, like I said, I think, you know, the city of Tifton has started that, that, that process of trying to work on fixing these things. But yeah. it's not something that just happens overnight. Yeah. It's a collective effort, um, you know, from many different levels. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, the city of Tipton for sure is going to do that. But we also have to have some some other buy ins from right. the county and a collective group. So um, and I well, think like I said that. at the beginning of the meeting, and I'll wrap the comments up with this. This isn't our city. Mm -hmm. It is in some aspects because we live here. We are we're elected to 
do a specific job, but it's our, it, it's our collective city. It's whether you're a resident, whether you're a visitor, whether you're a homeless person, um, we have an obligation to, uh, to serve all who are in our community for whatever reason, whether it's a college student or a shopper or someone visiting the doctor, or whatever. Um, and we take, I know that everybody that sits on this council takes that very seriously. I know that everybody that's employed under the umbrella of the city of Tifton, the organization, takes that very seriously. And um, we need to have the conversation. Some of the conversations that we'll have with people concerning our community may be difficult and they may be challenging. This is one of them. Um, but it's not something that we're going to uh, shy away from and it's certainly not something that we're going to be disrespectful about. So. Um, so I appreciate y'all's input and, and your comments this evening and, and Jack's as well. So um, is there any further business that needs to come? Before? Oh, I do want to remind everybody about the financial literacy class tomorrow evening at 530 at the Leroy Rogers Center. Those classes are going very, very well. Classes are free. If you have not been to a class and you'd like to go, jump on in there tomorrow. They can catch you up. Uh, the classes do build somewhat, but not necessarily. There is a portal that you can go in and do some work. Uh, financial literacy is a big part of helping homelessness issues. Uh, if, you, if you don't know how to manage what money you may have or you can't set a budget for your family, how are you ever going to rent an apartment or buy a house and those kind of things. So financial literacy is a big part of that. It's a good program that Dr. Tift is overseeing. So uh, that's tomorrow at Leroy Rogers Center and it's free. Yes, ma'am. I want to go back to that appointment for the, you said you were going to appoint um, Dr. Patilla, mm -hmm. um, but there are two vacancies. So if yes. you could look back. I don't, um, and Randy. Okay. Reappoint Randy. I'm sorry. I, I did. I didn't. And then that should have that board solid. So we'll. Uh, I'll be reappointing Randy Chambers, and then appointing Dr. Pertilla. Thank you, Jessica. I didn't. Didn't do that. All right. So I got everything. Okay. All right. Any other business? Does anybody want to go home? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're adjourned. <laughs>